dear students this is chapter number 2 of economics factors of the indian economy i am continuing this chapter and i discussed a lot about the various activities uh, that are related to indian economy i first discussed about the activity that is on the basis of nature of activity in which uh, i discussed about primary sector secondary sector and tertiary sector and we come to know various activities like primary sector uh, is that sector where are many uh, activities which are related to agriculture dairy fishing forestry in secondary manufacturing and i gave you example of cotton and in the tertiary sectors many uh, this, this is service uh, sector it is also known as service sector and uh, has many activities like teaching uh banking transportation etc now second type of activity that i discussed to you it was on the basis of way people are employed so on the basis of way how people are employed there were two things one was organized sector and the other was an organized sector so dear children on the page number 30 here is a story of kanta and another story is of kamal so let's have a look Kanta work in an office she attends her office from 9:30 am to 5:30 pm she gets her salary regularly when to be noted she gets her salary regularly at the end of every month in addition to the salary she also get provident fund not only she is getting salary but also she is getting provident fund too as per the rules laid down by the government she also gets medical and other allowances she is getting salary she is getting provident fund she is getting other allowances recommended by the government kanta does not go to office on sunday and she gets off on sunday this is a paid holiday because sunday is a paid holiday for her when she joined work she was given an appointment letter when she joined this job she also got appointment letter stating all the terms and condition of work so my dear children what kind of work kanta doing kanta is engaged in an organized sector on the basis of the way people are employed we divided it into two parts one was organized and the other one is unorganized sector so let us have a look again of this activity kamal is kanta's neighbor he is a daily wage laborer in a nearby grocery shop he goes to the shop at 7:30 in the morning and work till 8 pm in the evening means working hours are enough he gets no other allowances no other allowances are there apart from his wages the wages that he is getting they are given to him only he is not paid for the days he does not work means no paid leaves he has therefore no leave or paid holidays nor was he given any formal letter saying that he has been employed in the shop he can be asked to leave any time by his employer so it is he is completely depend on the mercy of the employer so what kind of this activity so clearly it is shown that kanta is engaged in organized sector while kamal is in an organized sector so kanta work in the organized sector organized sector covers those enterprises or places of work where the term of employment are regular and therefore people have assured work they are registered by the government and have to follow its rules and regulation which are given in various laws such as the factories act minimum wages act payment of gratuity act shops and establishment act etc so it is called organized because it has some formal processes and procedure while workers in organized sector in ha uh, besides this workers in organized sector enjoy security of employment they are expected to work only a fixed number of hours if they work more than they have to pay overtime by the employer they also get several benefit from the employer so these are the things which are found in organized sector like job security monthly salary rules and regulation provident fund medical leaves paid leaves fixed working hour hour 
good working condition so these are the terms of organized sector now i will discuss about an organized sector an organized sector is characterized by small and scattered units which are largely outside the control of the government means they are not in the control of the government these are rules and regulations but there are rules and regulation but these are not followed rules and regulations are not followed job here are low paid and often not regular there is no provision for overtime there is no provision for overtime paid leaves holidays leave due to sickness etc employment is not secure any time they can be expelled expelled from their job people can be asked to leave without any reason without any reason they can be fired when there is less work such as during some season some people may be asked to leave when there is less work or no work a lot also depends on the whim of the employer means rest of the things are depend on the mercy of employer so here is a huge difference between organized sector and unorganized sector on the basis of ownership there is public sector and private sector so public sector is the government owns most of the assets and prov uh, provides all the services in contrast the private sector ownership of assets and delivery of services is in the hand of private individuals or companies like railways post office are example of public sector while iron and steel industry limited isco reliance industries limited are examples of private sector so private sectors are guided by the motive to earn profit to get such services we have to pay money to these individuals and companies the purpose of the public sector is not just to earn profit means the purpose of the uh, government sector or uh, private sector is not profit oriented so government raise raise money through taxes and other way to meet expenses on the service rendered by it so in this way in public public sector our government would uh, they get revenue through um, public by tax revenue etc job security is there allowances are there so railways post office these are the example of it while in the private sector they are private owned or individual owned revenue is generated through shares or by taking loans or the benefits of the tata iron steel company and this reliance etc are example of this basic these are the basis of the ownership public sector and private sector now let's discuss about unemployment what is unemployment so unemployment can be divided into two part unemployment can be divided into two part disguised unemployment that is also known as hidden unemployment and the second one is open unemployment so what is this disguised unemployment or hidden unemployment people appear to be employed but they are not actually employed while in open open unemployment people are unable to find job and what is the definition of unemployment in economics definition is this when a person is willing to do job but he is unable to get this job will be called unemployed so these are the two terms of unemployment disguised unemployment and open unemployment so let us have a look in detail for disguised unemployment on page number 26 let us take an example like lakshmi there is a character lakshmi owning about 2 hectare of an irrigated land depends only on rain and growing crops like jowar and arhar all five members of her family work in the same plot throughout the year so if they have now here else to go for work you will see that everyone is working none remains idle but in actual fact their labor effort get divided so each one is doing some work but no one is fully employed this is the situation of un underemployment or hidden employment where people are apparently working but all of them are made to work less than their potential this kind of 
under employment this kind of under employment is hidden in contrast what is open unemployment in contrast to someone who does not have a job and is clearly visible as unemployed hence it is also called disguised unemployment so now what our government is doing for removing unemployment here are some points i have uh, written over here reforms in educational system concrete action to promote decentralization and industrial activity promotion of small scale industries encouragement to self employment developed techniques should be used provision of infrastructure like railways roads hospitals schools etc credit should be given at a reasonable reasonable rate of interest so that uh, employment can be promoted government also provides 100 days of work through a scheme that is called narega let's discuss about it what is narega its full form is national rural employment guarantee act and it came in force in 2005 and this gives surety for the 100 days of work in a year so this system narega work under three scheme guaranteed employment guarantees wages and un unemployment allowances so what is guaranteed employment the surety of giving work for 100 days this is guaranteed employment guaranteed wages on the basis of central notified state specific wage list if somebody has applied for narega and that person is not getting wages so under the scheme of specific state specific and central notified notified centers he guaranteed wages will be given to that person next is unemployment allowance allowances if work not provided within 15 days of applying state pay and unemployment allowances in this case when person is not getting job he will definitely get some allowances given by the government so these are the efforts that the indian government is doing to promote employment in rural areas as well as in urban areas